Hey everybody, Dave Clark aka The Powder Guy. We're still in the powder shop, still cranking these powders out. Um, I wanted to do all of them with you, however, I didn't have a chance to get the camera off of Joe for a little bit. You know, finally got him. And I gotta keep on going on these jobs. So anyhow, this is the one uh, I really wish I could have went with it or built this one with you guys, but unfortunately I just had to keep on going. So I got the pattern built for this, okay? And uh, what I gotta do off of this, he wants two of these on a board. All the other patterns we're just gonna do one on, okay? So what I gotta do from here, this is both ass coat and drag half. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a frame around here. We're gonna pour a repro off of this to make a mold. And then we're gonna go ahead and make uh, two urethane patterns, okay, or plastic patterns, whatever you wanna say. So I got these built and basically, like I would say, you have to determine how you want to build these things. This one, I, I just kind of uh, didn't throw it together, but I didn't build this one as rugged as you know we usually would because all I got to do is get a plastic mold off and we're done. Okay, so I just made it out of pine. Like I said, my mahogany is getting a little bit low, so that'll work really good. I put some plastic fillets in there as usual. Yeah, that'll help hold everything together in that, but. Basically all I did was I, I um, just cut this shape out here and then I added these ribs in here, okay, just kind of added everything. Like we would have done this if, if we were going to just do one wood one, you know, we would have done it like, you know, this one where we, you know, just split that rib in half for the parting line, okay. And uh, done it that way, but like I said, since we're just gonna uh, make a mold off of this, okay, we're just gonna do it down and dirty, simple. Okay, so one of the things too, next we got this, I got a couple coats of um, clear coat on this. The clear coat seems to be the best to uh, make the molds off of. I usually use a sandable primer. However, the sandable primer that I used to use, uh, I can't get it anymore. And uh, the one that replaced it, I, I just, I'm not liking it too much. It sticks a lot to the um, the blue uh, repro in it. Even it, I can just grease the crap out of it and it still pops out. So, so what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a mold off of this, okay? So, like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do down and dirty again with this too. It's not a big deal. We're gonna make a mold and I'm gonna pour two of each of these and, and we're done, that's done. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this and I don't wanna spend a lot of money on this, all right? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a bunch of scrap wood that I have to make a frame and then we'll grease this up, pour urethane, and we should be done, okay? So there's a couple ways to go about this, okay? Um, like I said, I found this chunk of uh, pine. It actually has some holes in it too, but, you know, we'll either fill that in with uh, the urethane will fill into that, or, or we could put some bondo in there. And that, that's one of the things you can do with this. It's uh, Since it's not long-lasting like a core box, I'm not going to build a real sturdy frame. And, you know, we can use Bondo. I've, I've used Bondo a lot to, like, kind of glue the frame together. And, you know, you, you can fill in spots with it, too, so you don't take up as much of the uh, the Repro. Because Repro, it's fairly expensive. It's over $100 a, a unit now. So, anyhow, I want to try to use as much scrap wood on this as I can. Now, typically, what we'll do is with the Repro... Repro is pretty forgiving. I probably could, and like a lot of larger shops would do this. They, they would just put a frame around here and just pour a repro. It, it's way cheaper. They'd spend $100 for a whole unit, you know, versus a guy spending a couple hours building a frame, and then you're still going to use half a unit of repro anyhow. However, my pockets aren't that deep, so I'm going to try to fill in as much of this as I can, and we'll pour a repro from there, okay? So, 
what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'm going to start out with the side frames, okay? I'm going to use this. I'll be able to get my two long side pieces with this, and then we'll figure something out for the ends. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these pieces in, these eye-shaped pieces. And what I'm going to try to do is, is what you try to do with a lot of this stuff is uh, the repro. The repro is not as... Uh, it's a little thicker, you know, than, than like the red urethane that I use. The red urethane flows real easy. The uh, Repro, and, and I've noticed a lot lately too with the Repro, it doesn't have as much, uh, I don't know if you call it the edge time, it doesn't have that much pot life. The pot life is getting shorter on Repro for some reason. It's it's setting up really quick. So you got to kind of watch, you don't want to get it too thin where things aren't going to flow. in it. But I think a good quarter of an inch around everything, we should be good. And uh, like I said, it's not going to be that, that huge of a deal with this because it's just we're going to make a mold to make two patterns off. That's going to be it, all right? So let me get started with this. Um, you don't have to sand anything with this bar where two joints are going to go together. We're going to have to sand those. But for everything else, we're just going to leave bandsaw cuts in that. And that'll help the urethane or the repro, you know, hang on to the frame too, all right? So let me get started, guys. Hang tight. Okay guys, I got my two side pieces cut out, okay? And like I said, you see this, it's just really rough, okay? It's not a big deal, okay? We're not making something permanent, all right? So next I wanna do some end pieces. And the other thing too, real quick, you know, good inch, you know, that's fine. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything, okay? I mean, you could've used plywood, I could've used plywood, but I wanna try to get this a little close, I don't want to waste too much time, but here again, I don't want to waste a bunch of plastic either. Okay, so next I'm going to do the ends, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pieces that I cut that out of, okay? So, I'm um, going to get my hook scribe. Alright, that's another good thing to, uh, to have. And we're going to go ahead and I'll try to find a place without holes in it here. All right, we'll make a couple pieces here. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out, or not cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay both pieces out so that I don't have to make two trips to the bandsaw, okay? So what I'll do is, I'll label this piece number one, number one. Like I said, A, B, C, D, whatever, whatever, whatever. No big deal. Alright, if you want to put an X which end you cut out, you know, that's up to you, another, no big deal. Okay, we got clamps in the way of this one, so I clamp these down too, so it doesn't move too, too much, okay. Let me go cut these out on the bandsaw, guys, I'll be right back, okay. Okay, guys, got two end pieces done, they kind of basically look like that, right. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and uh, glue these on and then I might later like I said a lot of guys will just use Bondo and that because down and dirty in it and uh, we don't want any uh, repro leaking out of these either okay so you know that's another another thing the only thing is too I like to I like to do both um, you know, even though we're not making something permanent, it's it's still got to be, you know, still got to make two molds out of it, right? So I want to make sure the mold doesn't bust apart. And believe me, I've had it happen before. You know, I just need to get one, whatever. The part gets stuck in there because you didn't grease it good enough or something, and, and you end up busting, busting your mold, and then you got to do some repair on the mold too, which isn't fun a lot of times. Okay, so just, you just gotta, you know, use your, you know, it, that's the thing with this too, it, it's, you know, how much time you want to spend on it. If you're doing this for yourself, you know, it's not that big of a deal, you can take a little bit more time on it, right? And, uh, but you know, when you're doing this for a customer, you know, you quote it for a certain amount of money, you, you got to get the job done. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I got to make, uh, We've got these two. I'm gonna make a couple pieces for here. I gotta go find some stock for that. And then I might I might fill this in a little bit here too. 
Um, like I said, I don't, I don't want to waste too, too much repro, okay? Um, one of the things we would have done too, it, it, here's, here's another thing. If you're doing like a core box, a lot of guys want, probably the way I would do this was, what you could do is uh, for your quarter inch wall thickness, right? Just get a couple quarter inch strips of wood and cut them into little, you know, quarter inch one by one by quarter inch cubes or whatever and you can put those down on you put those down on this surface and then put a block up there that way the urethane goes underneath the those blocks so you have a all urethane core box okay this one like i said we're just making a mold i'm just going to go ahead cut two blocks out. i'm going to try to find a piece of uh, scrap wood like this again and uh, i'll just put two pieces in there um, they got to stay down, we'll figure a way, we might put a strap across, I might even just screw a screw up underneath just to keep them there so they don't float up in that, okay? So a couple different ways you could do it, uh, we'll, we'll show you both once we get that far. Let me go find some more wood, I'll be right back. Okay guys, found a piece of wood, um, actually it's kind of the same piece. Um, years ago, I think I told you, and this is another thing to look out for too. One of my customers, uh, one of the other pattern shops he work, works through, uh, pretty much one of the biggest pattern shops here in the state, and they throw, they probably throw more out than I use. I mean, they get lumber by the truckload, semi truckload. So, anyhow, what happens every once in a while, they'll do. The full mold box jobs, they'll throw them out. He'll just, if they're substantial size, he'll grab them. There's a ton of lumber and he says a ton of pine. So he grabbed a bunch of those. That's what I'm using today. They're, 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 this stuff has a bunch of holes in it. So that's what I kind of figured I'd use that. So anyhow, <clears throat> the other thing I got to do is I am uh, I got these side pieces. I want to fill in a little bit too. And what I ended up doing was I used you know the one cutout piece I used for the ends well there was the other cutout I just cut it in half and then we're just making these pieces out then you look at that and it's like uh, you know is that really worth doing this to fill well it's not just one piece two pieces there's four pieces so there's four pieces there and then like I said we'll, we'll fill in these two pieces there and I'll, I'll save half a unit of repro and to me, that's that's a lot. So it's um, yeah, it's taking a little bit of time to do this. Now, however, on the flip side, you know, I wouldn't take 10, 12 hours to make a frame like this just to pour. Definitely wouldn't do that either. You know, so stuff like this. And like I said, since I've been doing this for so long, this frame literally, I've got 20 minutes into it so far, if that. So it's not too bad for me. I'll, I'll get this frame done in about a half an hour. So, you know, for me, half hour's worth of my time's worth, you know, half a unit of repro there. So, anyhow, I'm going to glue these two pieces in. Then um, what I did, the other thing I tell you guys to get to is, is the uh, poster board. Okay, get the poster board. I cut a couple templates out here. I got those on. I'm going to cut those things out, and then pretty much we'll be done. Um, I'm going to glue these things in. Like I said, it's... Uh, um, Usually we let stuff cure for easy a, a four hour period. This we don't have to because we're going to be pouring plastic. Okay, this is just a filler thing. All right, so yeah, like I say, if it was like a core box frame, we would, uh, you know, I would glue the frame up, let it sit for a little longer. This is, we're going to use one time, twice. Okay, so we'll do that. Then um, I'm going to glue these two last pieces in. It's lunchtime, I'm going to go grab a bite to eat. And then by the time I'm done eating, these things will be glued on there and what we'll do is we'll take the frame back off I'll polish up the uh, the uh, clear coat on there okay and then we'll start greasing it up and get it ready to pour alright so I'll see you guys after lunch okay guys we're done with lunch um, had the clamps on those are the, the thumb clamps on these side pieces and I cut these uh, football shape pieces out to fill the inside. Okay, so I'll give you a close up here. Okay, that's basically what it looks like. Okay, so 
looking at that, I could have got things closer. Yeah, but like I said, it's um, basically you have to determine, you know, time for money for um, the plastic and that. So this, I'm, I'm fine with what what's here and that. So what I'm going to do the next step. What we'll do is I'm going to trace around this to make sure that this is going to go back on the same spot. All right, and then what I'll do is uh, we'll take this off. I got to polish the master up a little bit. I'll just take some uh, this is Scotch Bright, okay? Just use a Scotch Bright pad, polish that up, and I'm going to start greasing. I'll put like probably what I what I've been doing lately. I've been putting three of the the brush grease on there. And then I'll spray it once or twice too. This one I definitely don't want sticking. All right, you want to get this off in one pop and uh, you know try to get this job done. What I'm planning on doing tomorrow, hopefully I, I can get two of these poured. And then what I want to do tomorrow is I'm going to head up to the foundry where these are going to. It's about 45 minutes from the house here. I'm going to take two of these because uh, <coughs> two of these are going to go on a board. I'm going to take this binocular shaped one, this one, and that one bronze arm one. I'm going to take all these up to the um, foundry, and he's going to tell me how big of a board I'm going to mount these on and how to gate everything. So uh, we'll get into that next. Okay, so I'll pour this. I'll show you guys pouring this thing. And uh, from there, <coughs> like I said, um, hey, I apologize too. I keep on apologizing. I, I finally figure out what's going on here. I might, my sinus has been been having sinus issues lately. But uh, one of the things, it's it's winter time. I got everything buttoned up in here, so I think it's just a lot more dust that's getting in my sinus. Kind of hard to talk. So anyhow, um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, like I said, polish this thing. We'll pour a couple. I'll show you how to pour this, and um, when I get it ready to go, I'll turn you guys back on. Okay guys, I got uh, my frame traced out on here. All right, so first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this kind of grease, uh, Freeman Wax Release. This actually is not Freeman's. I started out with one of those, but I ended up getting an order of uh, fiberglass. I had to do a big fiberglass pattern. Um, the guy recommended I use their uh, release with it, you know, for their formula. So. The smallest can I could get, he sent me like a big giant, giant uh, he has a two gallon plastic bucket, so I got it. That's what I've been using. I suggest use the Freeman with the Freeman products, it's good, but like I said, I got a bunch you can, I got to use up. Plus, <clears throat> um, you know, it's formulated for their plastics. You can use Minwax, Minwax works just as good too, you know, that's not a big deal. Alright, so when I do this, what I do is I get a the finest brush I can get, like, you know, horse hair or something like that. Go to Hobby Lobby or uh, Walmart. I think I got a package of them at Walmart for, they might not be like horse, horse hair, but they're really fine. So basically what I'm, I do, when I do this stuff, like I said, you got to put at least three coats on to make sure you get everything. Uh, first, very first job I did, you know, I'm watching guys make plastics all the time, so... My foreman Joe, he's like, hey, you know how to do this? Yeah, no problem. Put a coat of wax on there, pour it. Couldn't get my uh, master out of the mold. He, he's like, yeah, I thought you knew how to do this. I said, yeah, I, you know. He goes, well, what you, how many coats of wax you put on? One. It's like, got to put three. Easy, at least. So the way I do it, like I said, I can't afford to make any mistakes. So I'll put three coats of this in, and then I've got, it was right here, it's not here. Um, I've got a spray can of release from Freeman also. Okay, so what I do, the way I do this, especially this is bigger, right? So what I do is I, I kind of do it systematically, okay? So I got the whole parting done already, okay? And then from there, what I'm doing, I'm just getting all the vertical surfaces, okay? And you got to brush this stuff out pretty good, too. Like I said, you want to use this... Uh, Get a fine brush because what happens is if you have brush marks in there that's going to come out in the plastic okay and then it's going to come out in your pattern right so you're going to have brush marks in your pattern so do it systematically okay so i'm going to do that 
And then I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna flip it over, get the other side, okay? I'll do this side, and then I'll lay it down and I'll get all the stuff on the top, okay? Now watch when you get on the top, you're gonna slob stuff over, you know, the edge, so get it. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit, take a piece of toilet paper, wipe it up, do another coat, let it sit for a little bit, buff it out, put another coat on, and we'll go. And then like I said, then we'll do the ice coat, then we'll put the frame back on and pour it, okay? So I'm just gonna do this, you guys don't need me to, uh, don't need to watch me brush all this stuff on here, so. Um, one thing real quick too. Okay, I was uh, buffing this stuff out, okay? So I can't get my fat sausages in here, all right? So, you know, there's no way I'm gonna get these fat fingers in there. So I just took my ruler, I suggest take a piece of wood, but like I said, I've been doing this for a little bit while. You know, you don't wanna take this piece of metal and uh, scrape up your job. So you do that and then you, I, I got grease on here, so I don't wanna do it, but you know, you, you can clean out in between there. Okay, buff that out, all right? So that's the way, just gotta always think of all these uh, little different ways to do things, little different shortcuts, okay? So let me finish greasing this up, guys, and then I'll turn you guys back on when we're ready to pour. All right, see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, got right this thing ready to go. Um, I was gonna mix up some repro. You see me do it again, but we'll just uh, film a little bit here. I always wear rubber gloves, personally. A lot of guys don't. Uh, I pre-mixed this already, and. All you do is mix it 50-50 and then we'll get to pouring. So all I do is put a couple marks on the jug and mix her up there. Just use a stir stick. A lot of times um, what Freeman asks you to do is mix you know get, get it going in one and then, then get it Put it into another container uh, that way you get a real good mix you don't get stuff sticking to the side of your cup and uh, you know pouring in it's not that hard but this this stuff is so unbelievable it's unbelievably forgiving so this one I've got it all open so I'm just gonna start pouring it in all over and uh, should have a mold here shortly. Okay, now here, here's the thing. I always guess about how much you got to put in. I'm, I'm a little bit less than halfway done here. Uh, so I know, I know I'm going to need at least as much. So I'll mix the same amount again and then uh, we'll go from there after. We'll make some adjustments after. All right, Oop, didn't mix this. Oh, that great there. And this is taking quite a bit here too, so. And you just saw me, I just used a mixing stick that had hardened or stuff that's gonna harden in there that wasn't a good thing to do however I know I'm gonna use all this in one shot here so okay there you go that's all done so uh, I got that poured we're gonna let it cook for an hour ish and then we'll have a mold then we'll start pouring patterns alrighty so catch you guys back in a bit Okay guys, got this thing poured off. We're getting ready to pull out the uh, master patterns. Okay, so what I did was, what I did when I mounted these on a piece of plywood, I could have screwed them to the piece of plywood. I am kind of getting low on plywood and how much plywood costs right now, I didn't want to put any more holes in than we had to, all right? So I just, uh, glued them, to, uh, just spot glued them on, right, so they wouldn't move. And what happened was when I started taking these off, <coughs> the, the board popped off. That's, that's playing, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking these out, 
Okay, so here I, I made these little uh, pieces of wood with bridges. We call them bridges, basically. And what we're going to do is start try to put even pressure under it, even as you can. Okay, and then sometimes you just just leave them sit for a bit too. You know, and they'll, they'll start popping up. Somebody hear that? Just pop. That just popped there. All right. So we can keep on going there. Something just let loose. This is looks like it's coming pretty good. So I was you know keep a couple of these bridges around, or you could just use um, my guys just use a flat piece of wood and just put like shims underneath or whatever. You know you can do it anyway. I just I've had these for for a long time. Now the other thing I like to do too. When I'm taking these out, I, I don't use a screw gun, okay? Because then you just end up stripping stuff out. And then, you know, a lot of times you don't have that much uh, extra room to go put more holes in it. But this, this is coming out really good. Like I said, what happens when you uh, put three, um, three coats of grease on it plus the uh, spray... You know, these usually come out pretty good. So, and then hopefully we should have minimal cleanup to do too, I'm hoping. So, let's see how this comes up. Just, just take your time. Not, not, this stuff you're not racing, you know. It's not, not a race whatsoever. Don't want stuff stripping and breaking. Now, if if you do there we go there's there's the pattern that's out there okay there's the mold if i can see uh the uh clear coat stuck a little bit there but just take a rag with uh, a little bit of lacquer thin around there and that that should be all right but that's what we're after okay so i'm gonna undo this one i'll get it set up we'll, we'll do the next one over okay Hang tight there, guys. Okay, guys, I'll give you a little close-up of uh, what this looks like here. All right, the other thing I do, too, it's this piece of wood. I just cut a notch out of it, you know. Um, this one's just out of pine. A lot of times, I try to make them out of hardwood. They'll last a little bit longer. Just drill a hole in there. I always put a washer in there, spread it out a little bit. Okay, I just told you I don't use a screw gun with this. But I'll get use a screw gun to get it going, and then, then we'll go from there. All right. The other thing too, I always do a pilot hole, but be careful you don't go through and into your mold. Okay, that, that would suck. So basically, know how deep you got to go. You know. Especially this one that's kind of deep and skinny. All right, so what I'm going to do, I am going to use the screw gun to get it, you know, down a little bit, and then we'll we'll go from there, okay? I don't want to have to hand screw this the whole thing. And I think that just popped right there. Ooh, this one. Bummer, I'm going to have to put the, the pattern back in here. Uh, something. I got to do something with that. Okay, this one, like I said, this, a lot of pattern making is finesse. This is one of the finesse things that you want to do. You can hear that pop. I think you can. I'm not sure if you'd be able to hear it on there. But yeah, you can hear it pop. Yeah, that, that side just went and I can see it popping up here too. 
So the two ends are there. Just got to get going on the middle here. Another thing you can do too is I had my hammer here. You can pound on these things a little bit too. That'll get them going. get a longer screw here guys hang tight okay guys got a longer screw in here I just started out and it just it just popped so so didn't even need it after all all right and I can see where it did uh, some of the coating came off the, the clear coat but no big deal like I said we can clean that up with a little bit of black thinner and a rag okay so there you go there's my mold okay I'm going to clean this thing up a little bit. You guys don't need to watch me do that. It's going to be boring. I'm just going to take a rag with some lac thinner in it. Go ahead and do that. And then uh, next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pour repro patterns. Okay. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll, you know, we'll have two of these each, each side, you know. So with that, we'll mount the plastic ones and to uh and to uh what do you call it's um the match plates okay so what i'll probably do too i'm not gonna pour this i'm gonna probably fit a block of wood in there too and then we'll just hang it pour it that way uh you know that's a pretty big chunk of plastic but everything else we'll, we'll just do plastic here so i'm gonna cut it short here guys uh my, it's probably not too short probably went a little longer so there's that, and then what we're gonna do next is, um, like I said, I'm gonna take these to the foundry tomorrow. We're gonna find out where we gotta mount and gate everything, and I'll show you how to mount and gate all this stuff, okay? Um, got a little bit of an influx of uh, subscribers again. I'd appreciate it if you guys would subscribe hugely. Uh, push the like button for me, and if there's any suggestions on things that you wanna see, need to see, have to see, whatever, give me a, uh, you know thing I down in the comments it's you know things that you want to see that way too it's like I said I just do this off the top of my head a lot of times and uh you know it, it's it's what I have here so if there's something you guys are doing a project you know you guys need some help on uh one of my customers out in California his son's got a little bit of a foundry he'll call me up how to do gating here and there I'm not an expert expert at gating but literally I kid you not, no exaggeration, I've gated well over a couple thousand jobs, so uh, I do halfway decent, okay, so like I said, you can change it a little bit as you get along too, so yeah, if you guys sub subscribe, I'd appreciate it, push that like button, and we'll see y'all another time, everybody have a good one out there, and the most important thing, stay safe. Mm -hmm.